You take care now. Bye bye. Hello. How is it I can help? Oh, oh, absolutely adorable. What breed? Oh, stunning. Boy or girl? Oh, hello, hello. Absolutely adorable. How old is she? Oh, that's wonderful. Have you just picked her up? Oh, that's great. I take it you're here for puppy supplies, is that correct? I did think so. Okay, first of all, do you have anything at all at the moment? No, you don't. Okay, that's fine. So, would you like me to just go and get some bits and bobs and pop them on the table behind me and go through some things with you? And this is your first puppy? Yeah. All exciting, but I suppose a little bit scary as well, isn't it? Yeah. All right, then, lovely. I will be back in a moment. Please get yourself comfortable. There is a chair there if you would like to sit down and we'll go through, through things. All right, then. I'll see you in a moment. Right, as you can see, I've got a really good selection of things here. Okay, so what I will do, I will go through the items that I feel are quite necessary, and then you can choose what you want and what you don't want. All right, but I can take you round and show you the different foods that we have. Okay, great. So first things first, Puppy pads, I think, are quite necessary. So these are puppy training pads, as you can see. Yeah. So these are in a pack of 30. Okay. You can get different size ones, bigger ones as well. Okay. So what these are for odour control, they built in attractant which is specially scented to attract and encourage your puppy to relieve themselves on the pad rather than doing it around your home okay and they do come with four sticky pads so you can pop them on the floor securely so they don't move however if you wanted we do have a rubber mat which these fit nicely in and you can use that instead but that's totally down to you okay so one thing that a lot of customers tend to worry about is puppies doing their business around the home. Okay, so we need to encourage them as much as possible to relieve themselves outside. Okay, I would suggest popping the puppy pad near the door at the back. Yeah, so just encourage them to go there and to go outside and if they do have an accident hopefully it will be on the puppy pad okay again it does depend on the size of your home where your puppy will be most of the time etc okay so do bear that in mind when i had my puppy my doors were literally on the back of the lounge my french doors so i just popped puppy pads by that door and we were working that way yeah, it's always best, I think, to get the training in, like, sooner rather than later. Okay, yeah. I would keep going outside every time you put them to sleep. Then, once they wake up, put them outside. After meals, put them outside. And then, eventually, you can start getting a little bit longer between periods. Okay, yeah. They do say they have a little bit of trouble with bladder control and bowel control to start with, okay? I do think that does depend on the puppy, if I'm honest. Yeah, I have had ones that have really developed quite quickly, and then I've had others that are a little bit slower. So, yeah, please bear that in mind. Okay, yeah. Do you have any questions at all about any of the puppy pads? Mm-hmm. Okay, 
Yeah, I mean, some say try to put them on the pad. Some say, you know, just keep taking them outside. I think it's totally up to you. Okay, and it's positive praise. So all the time when they, you know, relieve themselves outside, it's, you know, good girl kind of thing. And some people suggest giving you a treat just to encourage them as well. Yeah, and some people, they don't recommend you, like, telling them off at all if they, you know, accidentally do it in the house. I've had some people that say it works to tap them on the nose, say no, and then put them straight outside. Obviously, we don't want to show any aggression to them, but, you know, it's always good to make sure they've got a little bit of discipline. But I think that is totally down to you, personally. Yeah. Okay, so let me just show you one of the pads, all right? So as you can see, they come like so. Okay. Yep. You can see quite soft, smooth, and quite a decent thickness, which I'll open it up for you in a moment. And we can see it's quite a decent size. There we go. As you can see quite a fair size and it's a little bit like a nappy if you like that's the best way I to describe it and it's quite cushioned and quite quite soft for their feet too and as you can see at the back it's like a waterproof lining and then you have these little sticky bits here and you literally peel off off like so and then just securely pop it on the floor and just press down in those areas where the sticky pad is and it just helps secure it in place okay and what I recommend is if they do something on here I would straight away pick it up and put it in the bin. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, we don't want to kind of encourage them to get used to using puppy pads. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, obviously it's good to use these and get them closer to the door if you like. Yeah, some people like to pop them in different places around the house and things. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't do that, no. Yeah, if you are going to crate train, definitely don't put one in, in the crate because we want that to be a safe place, we want it to be a comfort and we want it for them to be able to go to sleep and stay in there if you go out and things. Yeah, so pop a blanket in there or waterproof mattress or things like that. We do have those dotted on the shelves, which I can show you later. Okay, or I'll just show you in, in the catalogue, along with a crate and some of the puppy food if you would like. Do it that way. Okay, that's fine. And these, don't pop them in there because we don't want them relieving themselves in the place of their sleep because it's a good way of training them. They don't like to do it where they sleep, so it makes them hold themselves and get their use of the control of their bladder and bells, etc. Does that make sense? Okay, would you just like to have a little feel of that? Yeah, it's very soft and padded, isn't it? Yeah, it's very good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sure, that's fine. Would you like to start off with a pack of 30? Mm hmm. Okay, that's. Okay. Next. It's always good to give a puppy or any of your dogs and cats a nice groom. Okay, it helps relax them and soothes them and it's a good bonding session for you and your pet and it helps obviously remove any excess hair that's floating around if they molt and things like that and it just is a little bit nice to do and if they're a kind of dog that tends to get, you know, 
a little bit knotty and things, I would always definitely recommend a brush. So I always recommend for a starting point with a puppy, is to use one of these. So as you can see, soft bristles, okay? Because we don't want to hurt it with any sharper brushes and things like that. At this stage, it's nice to just use a simple soft brush while they're growing. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot smoother and really kind of, you know, nice on their hair. Yeah. Yes, it does it does have a good sound, so it's quite sturdy brush on mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. It's very yeah, it's very good, isn't it? So literally all I would do is like this, like so. Yeah. And you can do down the legs. Gently on the chest area, tail, you can do the ears and the head. Yeah, just be very careful with the nose and obviously with the eyes. Okay, so this is always a good one to start with. And I don't know whether you know or have been told about the puppy smell. Yeah. When you first get them, I do find they have kind of a very distinctive puppy kind of smell. They tend to have it a little bit in their mouth and on their coats. Over time, obviously, that kind of gets more minimal. But some people do find it a little bit unpleasant. Um, some people aren't bothered. But what I like to suggest to people is a nice little deodorizing spray. So it's ideal for puppies from six weeks old, so this is okay for your pup. You can get all sorts of shampoos and different products like that. But this one is a simple, easy product, and I like this. So it is gently scented, okay? So it's odour busting, it's antibacterial, and it's also a very mild formula. And it comes in a spray bottle, okay? So it has quite a soothing scent as well to help kind of soothe them, basically. It's instructions on the back. What I recommend doing, there's two ways of using it. So, give it a nice shake, okay? And you can simply spritz, like so. Or, what I found a little bit better, because puppies can be a little bit wriggly, is I get this area here, especially on this nice soft brush, and I spritz, and I literally go, as you would, without, I do it all over. And then, again, you can do that as much as you like, and work your way through. Yeah? Okay. And as you can smell, it smells gorgeous, doesn't it? Yeah. I've used this, and I would say, you know, after a couple of times, the kind of puppy smell kind of went, and I just found that my puppy enjoyed it very much. It soothed her a, a soft kind of, you know, hair and things like that. It was really nice to touch, and I really found it such a bonding experience, as I mentioned. Yeah, and well, she absolutely loved it, so it is a really good product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very safe. It's fine. Just be careful when spraying it. We don't want to get it in their eyes, their nose, and inside their ears or their mouth. Okay. So please, please, please be careful with that. Yeah. I do recommend that you spritz on the brush, not very near to them. Okay. And... Also, if you're doing it on the brush, make sure you do it away and then brush them. But like I said, just be careful of all those areas. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No problem. I'll pop those there for you. Okay. Okay. Right. We 
have a selection of poppy leads and poppy collars. All right. Now, it's always good to start practicing having them on a lead. Yeah, I do think it's important. But outside, okay, some people like to take them outside to the toilet and have this on. Yeah, and start to like walk around with them and things. Yeah, some people just like to, you know, pop it on and walk around the garden and get used to them like that because you need to make sure you give them the injections first. Yeah, and they can't go out for about a week after the second jab, but please, you know, check with your vets on what kind of jabs you are using. Okay, but we've got all sorts of different colours, but I have just picked this one up for you. So it's quite sturdy. We don't want anything too thick with a puppy because obviously they're only tiny. And you can get matching collars with these. So let's have a look. Yeah, how do you think? It's quite a decent size, as you can see. And then you've got your little hand there. And if you feel, it's very soft. Yeah, it's got nice for you. You've got a good clip here. It can be a little bit stiff to start with, but then it gets a little bit easier. But, it, you know, it proves comfort for you. That it's quite a sturdy one. Yeah, they're very pretty, aren't they? Until they get to a certain size and a bit stronger and things, I think this is quite a way to go. Like I say, it's quite handy, kind of size. Yeah. I always think it's best to start quite early with them because, I mean, I know some people who've had puppies and they really don't like being on the lead. Yeah, because they left it quite late. And I know it can be a little bit of a struggle even with the younger puppies, so, you know, it's best to get it started. And definitely put it on a collar so they get used to it and then a tag. Yeah, we do the tags, the machine over there for you. So pick your tag, which one you want, and select what writing you want on there, etc. And then we can print it here for you. Yeah, so, yeah, we can do that later for you. That's not a problem. Okay, so... Okay, that's fine. So next we want to talk about a little bit more about toilet training. Okay, so I always recommend a odour and stain remover in one. Yes, this is a cat one. We don't have any of the dog ones in stock. However, they're basically identical. So it's three times cleaning power. Eliminates tough setting cat stains and odours, discourages repeat spraying, because cats do spray sometimes males. But basically it's going to do the same. It's going to not want to make that puppy go back to that area. So it's a stain removal, which is great. And then it's going to get rid of the smell. Because you know when you use ammonia, I don't know whether you know this, but it doesn't actually get rid of the odour. So they just want to go back there. Yeah, that's true. Not many people know. They seem to use their bleach and all sorts of things and they're wondering why they keep going back. Yeah, that's why. Very important. But again, it's totally down to you. So it's safe on carpets, upholstery, bedding, clothing, water safe surfaces. Yep, lino, wood floor, anything like that. However, we have to say when it comes to that, please check with your manufacturer. Yes, yeah, so the people who made the wood flooring, but again, that's totally down to you. I've used it, loads of people have used it, and yeah, no problem at all. Okay, so yeah, this is really, really good. What to do? So remove the mess, okay, and blot it. Then you want to spritz this, so let's say saturate the area. We really do need to saturate the area, because we need to go through the carpet, the backing, and the underlay. Okay, so I'll show you on this. So there's two settings, we have a spray and we have the straight line of water. Okay, we want to use the spray for the moment, I'll show you that. So, like so. Yeah, you can see how good the poppy pads are. We don't have any leakage, no. So that's that, or we turn it to the long line. And you can see, get quite a lot on there, yeah. It does smell nice, doesn't it? It's very nice, quite, quite satisfying smell. Yeah, so 
I'll just quickly tell you what to do. So as I said, when you've removed the mess, you want to cover two times the size of the mess, okay? To make sure it's really covered because it spreads. Wait five minutes or more because you really want to break down like all the enzymes, you know, the bacteria and protein and things. And then we blot off the extra moisture with a colour safe cloth. Allow the area to dry completely for 24 to 48 hours. And if you want to then vacuum it thoroughly. And once dry and the stain remover and odour has been eliminated, rinse with water and use a clean damp cloth to remove any residue. Okay, what I do is literally I soak the area, live five minutes, and scrub it a little bit with sponge, soak up with a piece of kitchen roll, and then just leave it to dry naturally. And then obviously the next day and things I will be hoovering anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very handy. Okay, sure. All right. Next. Another bottle. Okay, so this is a foul tasting formula. Okay, prevents damage to furniture caused by nibbling, chewing. Safe on pets and furniture. So if they're, you know, keen on eating shoes and surfaces like wooden tables and, and coffee table legs and things, and even carpets, because my puppy was obsessed with my rug, because it was like a shaggy rug. She kept trying to pull it, and she got a little bit obsessed with the coffee table legs. However, I got this spritz like everywhere, and she stopped. At first, she was a little bit curious. I was a little bit, oh, you know, it does remind me a bit like lavender scent. It's very nice, quite satisfying. And no, she's absolutely fine. Uh, the furniture's great. There's no damage anywhere. Things. It's really good. So I highly recommend this. Yeah. So it discourages licking, chewing, and biting. Because you know when they're teething and things? Yeah. So she was quite obsessed with kind of licking the furniture as well, which is so strange, but she did, but she seems fine now. And it's a really good effective deterrent formula, and it's great on the skin, it's fine. So you can stop them licking their own skin and things like that, or if they've got bandages and stitches and things. So like I said, it's safe on the animal as well. But just be careful with the eyes. Same with the stain remover. And the mouth and nose and inside the ears and things. Okay, so just just watch how you do that. But I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's really good and safe. And I highly recommend this. I've gone around spritzing it, like I said, on furniture and things like that. Because sometimes if they have an operation or when they've been neutered and things, they can try and get a nibble in the bandage and things. It doesn't taste very nice. It puts them off. But as you can see, this has got a spray. No straight line, just a spray. Yep, you can still see. Totally bone dry. You can see it's gone quite through the padding, but as you can see, this isn't wet at all. So it makes it really good. Yeah, so I would recommend something like this. I didn't get mine at first, and then I thought, no, I really need to get some, and it, it was a great investment. Something else, digging. I had a cocker spaniel and he was obsessed with eating stones and trying to pull up my um, fake grass because I don't know why, he was just obsessed with that and kept trying to dig holes. And my new puppy, she's for some reason obsessed with eating stones. My first Labrador didn't do that, but this one does. And sometimes she's sort of going to be, oh, you know, what's this? And she seems to like trying to eat grass, like, which is fine, but sometimes she keeps going for weeds and things. So, you know, it's a great gardener, yes. <laughs> but I like this. This is natural active cat and dog repellent, scattered granules. Okay, it prevents, obviously, them fouling in places you don't want to, on lawns, paving, etc. But it's really good for them to stop like getting stones and areas of digging and things like that it is safe it's fine 
they will kind of sniff it they won't actually go to eat it or anything like that i've never known of anybody go to eat yeah no, nothing at all yeah so as you can see the fair size you can get some repellents, you see, which aren't very safe, and I don't really like those. But these ones are quite good. Let's see. Granules. And there's quite a lot in there. So you just open the cap, like so. And then you literally sprinkle in the areas. I like to go over twice, for example, down my gravel and across the bottom of my shoes to try and pull up the the grass okay and I just sprinkle it over and then go again okay so it's a good way of protecting your area okay so it's got natural aromatic plants and it obviously helps them from digging scratching etc all right I do find this smells a little bit like pepper but yes yeah, it's a bit of a strange smell but it does work now bear in mind if you think oh hang on a minute you know she's going to get it again it only really lasts 48 hours and i've noticed it does work well for that time and then after that you really need to go and do it again yeah definitely yeah i i think it's great it's not everyone's cup of tea and i would probably say if you want to try it without first and see what you know she does and what she doesn't do yeah you do get quite a lot in here yeah so you know it's great yeah okay no problem right so let's go on to the fun bits toys so we've got all sorts of different puppy packs i'm going to show you this now my dog's always like a little bit of tuggy okay and this is a little cute little rope. So I like this because it's great for their teeth. Great for the teeth. Really good little pull because obviously we don't want something too big because, well, it's not going to go in the mouth very well. But yeah. We've got a good range in this colour. Ropes, balls sorts of different things and they're good for their teeth and they're quite strong mm -hmm. yes it's, it's very good look see quite good yeah just a selection of balls um some people just buy them big balls i do find that they can't get it in the mouth very well so we've got all sorts of little balls they're quite soft as you can see but they're not necessarily easy to pierce. Well, it depends on the puppy, I'd say, and the strength of the puppy, etc. But you can see it's got nice, kind of soft, like a tennis ball, but a little one. Yeah? It's perfect size for you to go throw or under throw, and they can hold it quite comfortably in the mouth, which I think it's great that we've sort of started doing these little ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Then we got your typical squeaks. Look at that little shoe. You'd think we don't want them to bite shoes, so why are we giving them squeaky shoes? Well, I would say they might want to bite this instead of a shoe. But it's just, you know, a little novelty, really. Got bones, balls, these. Got different ones with different strength of squeaks. Okay, this one is quite noisy, as you can hear. But safe, plasticky, rubbery. Quite cute. Quite unique. I like these. I'd say if your puppy's quite strong and a real big chewer, then they're not going to last great. Yeah, we do have some stronger ones, like Kong are very good. Um, but then definitely the extreme, so the black ones are even better. Yeah, okay. 
Right, and I'm just going to show you a couple of treats. We do start doing treats now for younger puppies because before, you know, it's six months and things, we have started to do ones from a lot younger. We've got ones from six weeks, four weeks. The ones I'm going to show you are quite cute, actually. So these are from three months. Look at these. Aren't they so cute? They're little tubes. So... So these are obviously dentist sticks. I just love them. They're so cute. Um, they're perfect for puppies from three months old. Uh, no artificial flavours or colours. No added sugar. With calcium for teeth and bones. And they've got a natural abrasive action. So it's really good for dental care. And good for their teeth. And help them for the chewing and things like that. And help also for teeth. It kind of distracts them. Um, but yeah, these are good. The pack of seven. And they're chicken flavour. Now, obviously, these just have to complement their normal diet. Okay, but it's very good. Okay, another one that I quite like are these. Dental chews and the little bones, see? Yeah, these from three months as well. Flavoured with milk and it's raw hind alternative for more digestible treat with satisfying chewy texture. So they're a lot safer on, the, on their tummy because some things can upset puppies. And I think it's sort of a trial and error, I think, with what treats you give them. Some work, some don't work, some upset them, some don't. Yeah. That's, that, that's exactly my point, yeah. So it's basically, you just need to try and see which is best for your puppy. Okay. And these have resealable bags too, which is great. Are you wanting any of those items? Okay, what I'll do, I'll put those through, bag them up for you, take for those, then I can go around and show you all the food bowls, then I can show you the beds, bedding, and then I can also show you the cages and things. Are you wanting the chicken puppy food? The Harrington's? Okay, I'll add that on as well then. Oh, just bear with me. Seat. Yeah, I could put it at the back for you. Okay, let me go and show you around the rest of the store. 